Hello and welcome to the Strategic Bookkeeper podcast. I am going to start this intro by telling you a few things. So first of all, it's fairly early on a Tuesday morning when I'm recording this. I think the tradies will be at my house soon. (laughs) Many of you know I've been renovating my home. The other thing is I'm sitting here and I'm sucking on a lozenger because I have picked up another little cold, which is really frustrating. If you listen to my podcast, you'll know that I had a bit of a rough time recently with some colds and things, like two months, and podcasting is hard when you are losing your voice. But the other thing I wanted to share a little vulnerably, but very much to serve you, is that one of the things I'm doing around my health is leveling up my mindset. Okay. So I prioritize my self and my health above all else. Okay. So that is, I put myself first, my physical, mental and spiritual health, because I learned years ago, the hard way that if we don't put ourselves first, if we put our kids first or anyone else first, then we can't show up in a way that is best for them anyway. Okay. So I absolutely prioritize myself and my health. However, I have fallen victim, if you put it that way, to a few things. And a good friend of mine who I call one of my one inch friends. So my one inch friend concept comes from Brene Brown, who says, get a one inch by one inch piece of paper and write down the names of the people that you can rely on to be very honest with you, (laughs) even when it might be hard to hear. So I call these people my one inch friends, and I am privileged to have quite a few of them in my life. And one of my one inch friends, Julie, said to me recently, gently, that she felt I should level up my mindset around my health. She didn't put it back that way, but that's exactly what she said. She said to me, Jeannie, your mindset around everything is extraordinary. She calls me like her sage. <laughs> and she said, so why is it that your health is different to that? And, you know, these things are confronting to hear. This is why they are our one inch friends. So long story short, my mindset around my health that I decided to adopt was that perfect health radiates from within me and I spontaneously heal. So I'm turning up today with that mindset and I am very happy to say that I'm getting through this little cold in record time. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is because as a coach in the Strategic Bookkeeper Transformation Program, or even outside that, when I talk to you right now, I want to remind you that there are three things that are really heavily involved in you finding success in your bookkeeping practice. And they are mechanics, mindset, and productivity. Yeah. And I'm sure there are lots of other things, but when I observed the tribe members in my program in the early days, yeah, who was getting results, who was struggling more, it wasn't the mechanics because I give everyone the same keys to the kingdom. Yeah. And everybody comes in ultimately with a very similar starting point. Yeah. We can all say, oh, I'm busy. I'm this, I'm that. I know that we are all the same busy, but some of us find a way to get there. And I truly believe I should say in my experience, I know that beyond the mechanics, which is the things that you need to do, it's your mindset and your productivity that makes the massive, massive difference. Okay. For example, if your mindset is, I can't, yeah. And I don't have time and I feel overwhelmed. Yeah. My clients won't accept a price rise. Whatever your mindset is that completely holds you back. I don't care what I give you in terms of mechanics. Your mindset will prevent you from finding success. Yeah. You might be afraid of success. I've just been reading about people who fear success. Yeah. Give you success. That's going to take away your current identity of being busy and being this and being that. Okay. So that's a whole nother can of worms. We won't open right now. 
And I wanted to share that this morning in this very long intro before I dive into a podcast that I've been inspired to do from an email that I got yesterday. So from a beautiful bookkeeper who's not in the transformation program. And when she reached out to me, she was telling me how busy she is and how she's killing it in her practice. And she's got about four staff and they just can't keep up with demand and all this. And honestly, I knew in my heart, I knew from all my experience that this was a busy bookkeeper, not a thriving bookkeeper. So I simply asked her some questions and sure enough, the response has told me that she's very busy, but is she really achieving the work smarter rather than harder practice? Is she achieving the time wealth? Is she achieving the income and lifestyle that I help bookkeepers achieve when I help them get their mechanics, their mindset and their productivity right. So what I wanted to do in today's podcast, and I may end up breaking this up into a little series of podcasts because it's a big subject, is I want to ask you if you are making this mistake or more broadly, if you are making these mistakes and are so passionate about this. Okay. So we're going to dive into a bit around client attraction because when I survey bookkeepers, 50% of bookkeepers say I need more clients. Yeah. And it's definitely something that bookkeepers focus on when actually that is just a piece of the puzzle. So rather than rattle on anymore and with gratitude for you understanding, maybe a little bit of a croaky voice, we're going to jump into today's podcast episode. So you can have a think about what's going on in your practice now i said to my girlfriend my one inch friend julie last night when we were having dinner together at my house i said honestly i know in my heart that the first person we ever need to find the courage to be honest with is ourselves and it is hard yeah so i'm going to ask you to find the courage to be honest with yourself yeah which is very hard for all of us okay and to truly ask yourself when you're listening to this podcast, if you are either the busy bookkeeper or you're heading in the direction of being the busy bookkeeper, okay? Because what I'm going to share, we've all been there, including me. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm Jeannie Savage, the strategic bookkeeper. I've been in practice for 14 years, but more importantly, five years in, I achieved a lifestyle practice. This means I scaled my business, could take my hands off the wheel and draw a nice six figure income while being time rich. And that's what I call my dream on my terms. I was recently awarded Women in Finance Innovator of the Year, recognizing my book, my podcast, my program, and my impact globally. The Strategic Bookkeeper is my life's work and the opportunity to help bookkeepers globally achieve the income and lifestyle that sets them free absolutely fills my cup. Please do connect with me on socials at the Strategic Bookkeepers Way private Facebook group or shoot me an email, hello at the strategicbookkeeper.global. Hello, my friends. Okay, so let's jump into today's episode. And I often do like to kind of talk about what I'm doing, how I'm working. It just helps me to, yeah, I guess name it to tame it. So today, as I share with you around mistakes and misconceptions that you might be making in order to direct and redirect you, which we might talk about in a second, I'm going to be looking at this mind map that I've got and... I am going to ask my amazing assistant, Joselle, to drop it into the podcast show notes, which I have shared it in the book club as well, okay? I call it the big picture for bookkeepers. It is a really, really powerful mind map, similar to a flow chart, right? So when you get it and you see it, podcast interruption on the 22nd of March, the transformation program will change. So if you want to build a six figure income as well as time wealth, now is the time to join. Our currency will move exclusively to US dollars, meaning it will be $99 per week US dollars. Foundation member specials will completely finish, okay? And Evergreen will finish too, meaning the doors will close and I will only open the doors three times a year, okay? So three big changes. So back yourself and go for it and you can find out more by listening to episode 47. 
So when you get it and you see it, on the left hand side, it's got everything that you really need to have done and ready and sorted before you ever answer the door to a prospective client, okay? And arguably answer the door to an existing client with new needs, okay? And then on the right hand side, there are all the other pieces of the puzzle that you need to have in place in order to nurture that prospective client or client to onboard with our price as a priority. Now, that little sentence or those sentences that I just said there, they were really concise and short, but let me tell you right now, it was like me giving you a novel, okay? So if you want to go back and listen to this again, I would actually really encourage you to, yeah? Because the ability to find on board and retain clients without price as a priority, it's not just a throwaway line. It is like, hmm, I'm thinking of Indiana Jones right now. <laughs> you know, the Indiana Jones movies when he's searching for the giant diamond or whatever it is, when he's risking his life and he's doing all these crazy things and he keeps going relentlessly. It's like nothing will stop him looking for this emerald or this diamond. What I just said there, your ability to find on board and retain clients without price as a priority is like that emerald that Indiana Jones would do anything to get. Yeah, it's kind of like the elixir of your practice, <laughs> which probably leads me into the mistakes and misconceptions. Okay, so mistakes are like acting wrong and misconceptions are thinking wrong, okay? So if we are thinking wrong, we tend to act wrong. So we're going to dive into those. So I just talked about find on board and retain clients without price as a priority. So the mistake that bookkeepers make, and I made in the early days too, is not understanding and truly focusing on what's really required to make that happen, okay? So what they're looking to do, bookkeepers often, is to find new clients, yeah? And then to onboard those clients, yeah? And to do that using what I call the employee mindset and a math equation as pricing, yeah? And then in terms of retention, with retention, there are so many pieces to this puzzle. But if we come back to the three parts of the buying decision, which I've done a podcast on, so you can listen to that, relationship, convenience, and price, you need to be a 10 out of 10 in relationship, yeah? Because in terms of retention, one of the mistakes that I made early on is that I was able to lose a client when somebody else came along and impressed them more, dazzled them more, and gave them something that was maybe perceived as a dollar cheaper, et cetera, okay? So believing that retention will just happen because you're a great technician, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess that first mistake is really around going to market in your practice without a really rock solid understanding of what it means to find on board and retain clients without price as a priority, okay? So in order to expand on the mistakes that you might be making in regard to exactly what I just shared then, I think the best way that I can do that is to share what I do, share what the tribe members are doing, okay, because we are seven months into opening the doors to the program and a lot of them have been with me the whole seven months. We've also got newer tribe members and so on, okay, but I'm going to share this with you as I seek to help you with the mistakes that you might be making so I can direct and redirect you. My job as a coach, and it's something that I really believe and know in my heart, is to direct and redirect you. And I'll give you an example of that. So I've done it with business clients and now I do it primarily with my bookkeeping clients. So either I'm giving you fresh direction. So it might be something that you really don't know, for example, the customer journey, or you come to me, okay, just actually like the bookkeeper who reached out to me by email. I've literally got her email here printed in front of me or one of the bookkeepers in my tribe who I did a hot seat with about a week ago, you come to me and you're, you know, you've, you've got a lot going on in your practice. You're doing this, you're doing that. You tell me what you're doing because you still have a problem. Like the bookkeeper I did the hot seat with, she had so much work and therefore a capacity problem 
However, all of the work wasn't really translating into the dream. Yeah, I talk about the dream becoming a nightmare rather than a reality. So when she came to me, I checked her practice audit first because when you come into the program, you complete a practice audit for me in a Google form and then I've got all the results in a spreadsheet so that I can at any time look at what was happening in your practice at the beginning and if we hot seat, it's really helpful as well. So I was able to analyse her practice before we caught up and it was clear to me as a coach sitting on the outside of her practice what she needed to do. But during the hot seat, I went down a rabbit hole on one particular subject and that was a client that she was working with that had not been paying her okay and what was going on there and why and then the other rabbit hole we went down was the staff that she was considering recruiting okay now long story short in terms of direction and redirection on the client that was problematic the reason i focused on that is to change her mindset and so her mind and her behavior around that client was going to be to change her mind and her behavior around everything. I knew that, okay? So what I had to do was redirect her and then the same on the staff she was about to recruit, okay? To be honest, it was going to be a disaster. She knew all the things that I told her and showed her she tended to have in her heart and her gut and that's what happens, okay? that doesn't often steer us wrong yeah and i know when i'm talking to bookkeepers that aren't in the program deep in the pit of their gut they know they should join yeah but they develop a case for why they don't need to etc etc so our gut doesn't often steer us wrong and i just wanted to digress into this direction and redirection because that's what i'm here to do to give you direction but so importantly redirection because I think of it this way, if you are headed in a specific direction, thinking that you'll get to a specific destination and you are not going to get there because you've veered off course, my job is to steer you back on course in the direction of income and lifestyle, in the direction of a thriving practice with delighted clients and your dream on your terms. So you might be able to hear my passion for this, albeit a little croaky. So now we're going to go back to some stories of me, of the tribe and how we get this find on board and retain clients without price as a priority, right? So as to help you with the mistakes you might be making. So right now I'm just looking at my mind map as I talked about and I'm also considering this bookkeeper who's reached out to me. Okay. And I've got kind of like a top 12 mistakes that you could be making because success is a lot like a jigsaw puzzle. So one of the first mistakes that I see bookkeepers making that we get the tribe to not make anymore, okay, is the employee mindset and a math equation for pricing, okay? The second podcast that I ever recorded in this public podcast is about pricing and employee mindset. If you haven't listened, I recommend that you do, okay? So when I have the tribe come into the program, so to give you an example of how they get this right, all right, so you can think about what you're doing and you can think, have you listened to that podcast? If you haven't, you're going to take that action, right? Because we're not going to be surprised by the results we don't get from the work we don't put in. Okay, so you're going to listen to that podcast. So the tribe comes in and definitely the ones that get the best results are putting in the work, okay? So they get the Pricing Academy, which is a foundation member bonus, okay? And otherwise it's available to purchase standalone. So you get the Pricing Academy which has also my productized services and they get my thought leadership around outcome billing. So I often hear bookkeepers talk about value billing or fixed pricing. Honestly, these are phrases coined by suppliers and alike and accountants. I'm talking to bookkeepers. Yeah. And I'm a bookkeeper who's been there, done that. I want you to say it with me right now outcome billing okay so in my tribe the tribe members like a mantra we sell outcomes not hours we are outcome billing you will not hear anyone in my tribe talk about value billing can you tell me what value billing is because i used to feel like it was the emperor's new clothes so 
The absolute first thing is to move away from your employee mindset, which is let's say as an employee, you were getting paid $30, $40 an hour, whatever. And then you can double that rate. Amazing. Oh my goodness. Right. That's employee mindset. So the entrepreneur mindset is completely different to that and it's multifaceted and I did another podcast called The Entrepreneur's Journey, okay? So the entrepreneur mindset, which I am always evolving, okay? When you have had 35 years in employee mindset, being paid an hourly wage, this will not happen overnight or even in a year, but you will begin the journey and you will rock it and kill it but you will kill it and rock it more in the years to come. But basically one of the foundations around pricing when it comes to the entrepreneur mindset is to sell hours, not outcomes, and to actually focus number one in a linear fashion to build a thriving practice before you seek to delight clients and certainly before you ever get the privilege of living your dream on your terms. And a thriving practice is one where you have a smart strategic pricing strategy which has got productized services and minimum charge out values and where the hourly rate is not a math equation. So for example, one client getting one type of productized service if you were to break that down hourly, they might be paying you two, three, four, five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars an hour. Yeah. And if that makes you go, oh my God, that makes me sick in the stomach. I don't understand that. Then I want to tell you, you're probably, you have some form of employee mindset going on. Okay. And that's the first thing that you need to think about. So when you engage a real estate agent to sell your home, they charge you a percentage of the sale price. Yeah, they are charging you for the result that they get. And absolutely, as an entrepreneur, your job is not to sell your time or your hours. And that's actually not what your prospective clients and your clients want either. I can tell you right now, what they want is they want you to help them. Yeah. And if you think just reconciling the bank account is helping them, well, then you've got a little bit of a ways to go. And I'd love to be the person that helps you get there. Okay. So I've sat on this first misconception for a while, this first misconception and mistake, because it's just such a foundational piece, okay? And I want to continue these podcasts week on week as we explore a bit more of these mistakes relevant to finding new clients, which as I said, 50% of bookkeepers are going to tell me that's what I need, yeah? Relevant to that, but also relevant to how you actually build a practice where you are working truly smarter, not harder. And that means doing a certain amount of work for a massive result, right? Because I can tell you right now, the bookkeeper whose email is right in front of me, bookkeepers all over the world, myself in the early days, yeah? I have had eight staff before and done the same profit as I can do with two staff, yeah? So working smarter rather then harder. Okay. So I am going to wind up this podcast with a couple of things. I'm going to wind it up with an action plan. Okay. So your action is to absolutely listen to podcast number two around pricing. And it's also to have a look. I haven't looked at which episode, but it was an episode not too long ago around the entrepreneur journey. You can also just search for it and you'll find the entrepreneur journey. So listen to those two podcasts to grab my mind map, yeah, and to be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you really understand all the parts of the mind map and whether you have got all of that ready. And if you haven't, what action are you going to take? Because I get this email from this bookkeeper that's sitting in front of me and I read it and I ask myself, what is it that I'm not conveying about the transformation program that doesn't help this person see that it is the answer to all their problems. Yeah. I don't know whether it's because they sit in a place of not being entirely honest with themselves and wanting to believe that they can keep working and working and working. And I'm imagining kind of trudging and trudging and going and going and one day it'll all fall into place because this email tells me a million things that this person's trying to get right. And everything that this bookkeeper is trying to get right 
is served up, done for you in the program. So I ask myself what's holding them back. Is it that I'm not conveying what's inside the program enough or properly? Or is it more that they don't believe that they need it, that they can actually build all these things themselves? And if that's the case, it's a misconception that I totally relate to because in the early days I did seek help. And as you'll read in my book, I thought I found help and it was never the help I needed. And I had to do it myself in the end anyway. And my first five years were my fuck up years, right? And I look at bookkeepers like this and I think I know what they're headed for. They're headed for getting two, three, four, five years more in and turnover having gone up, but their time wealth and their income not being where it should be or could be and that leading to those feelings of the dream just not becoming a reality yeah so that other action is about being honest with yourself and so my friends I think we'll leave the podcast there I feel like it's been a little bit of a long one I will continue this conversation in the next podcast I'll see you then Okay, my friend, now it is time to take action. So what are you going to do with what you learned today? The way I see it, you've got two options. You can go it alone to try and save some money, or you can back yourself and go for it and join my tribe. And let me tell you, we are knocking it out of the ballpark. That's not a sales pitch. That is me serving you, dare I say, courageously. To find success, I 100% know you need the mechanics, which is like the keys to the kingdom, but you also need to get your mindset right and be super productive. And these are all things I help you with inside the program. I could go on about this forever because I really want this for you. Have a prosperous week and I'll see you in the next episode.